Good morning, it's Roger Gilbert here, the publisher of Milling and Grain magazine. I'm in the Rongo Rongo Live studio and I have the pleasure this morning or this afternoon, evening, wherever you might be, of talking to Mildred and Ron Cookson. Uh, Mildred and Ron set up the Mills Archive Trust uh, here in the UK. And as it's uh, the month of the World Flower Day on the 20th of March, uh, it's a great opportunity for us to learn a little bit about our history and how that pertains to the future. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Mildred and Ron Cookson. Good morning, Mildred and Ron. Good morning, Roger. Yes. Hi, Roger. Hi. Uh, Mildred, I understand that you were involved in the formation of the Mills Archive Trust. Could you tell us a little bit about that, please? Yeah, but going way back to 2001, um, there was a bit of a worry that the collection that I got together over many years, um, there was no repository for it at all. So we talked to a few other people and the same feeling was there was nothing in the UK that would actually um, take the material properly. So we decided in 2002 uh, to set up the Mills Archive Trust is for founder collections. Mm. And we started off at home working and then gradually moved to the Washington House where we are today. And basically, being a miller myself, I've collected a lot of material over 20, 30 years. And uh, traveling with an international uh, uh, sort of, um, what do you call it? Um, organization mm -hmm. that um, I visited many countries and seeing roller mills actually working in small mills and got really quite interested in them. Just being a traditional miller to start with, it, it, it actually made me realize that things had evolved and nothing was being done about it at all at this point. Yeah. And as I said before, there's no other archive in the whole world that did anything like we're doing today. Mm. Gathering information on technology, people and everything like that. So it's just been wonderful mm. say, 2002 to bring it all together. And um, I say we've now got well over 400 collections and 4 million probably uh, images and, and things. So it's, just, it's amazing how it's grown. Yeah, well, that that really is amazing. You know, the the opportunity that you've given the industry to record its history, uh, where nobody else was thinking about this. Exactly. And, yeah, and, and Ron, I mean, this international aspect is quite important, isn't it? I mean, yeah. maybe it started off as a UK uh, focus, but are you moving more internationally? Is it relevant internationally? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, Roger. They, it's uh, it's stunning how. Uh, we are attracting international attention. The, the whole thing started in a way, from my perspective, as uh, just being solving a family problem, a house full of material, what was going to happen to it. Rapid realized quickly that it was actually a national issue. There were lots of other people in a similar sort of attitude. And as we started to develop it, we suddenly realized that internationally, there's a great deal of material that has no home. Mm. It'll get thrown away. And in fact, Mildred made the point just now about uh, she's a traditional miller, and a lot of these people who are giving this material seem to think the history of milling stopped around about 1900, because they're interested in windmills and water mills, and after that it was looking at that, and not recognizing how much was changing during the 20th century. And very luckily, because of her initiative and pushing strongly, we started to collect this type of material. We of course came across yourself, yourselves have been a big help in this, bringing us to what I think is a fundamental issue for us, the two issues that drive what we're doing. One is, if you like, contemporary relevance. It's, it's history is about today, not about 200 years ago, 2000 years ago. That helps to illuminate today. So that's one thing that's really important in historic record. But the other thing is, it, it's not just British. You know, we are happily based in Britain, but we have um, a website, which just is one uh, barometer of the interest, in an average year now, we're attracting well over 200,000 new visitors. And they're coming from 150 different countries. Mm. So, so some of them are very small and a very small number of visits, but there's a lot of 
traffic in you know North America and Europe and some and quite significant in Asia as well. So we are very interested in the international aspect of milling as well as the um, the UK, if you like. Well, this is what we're trying to do, isn't it? We're trying to make uh, the history of milling relevant to today and also projecting forward for us into the future. And yeah, of course... I think that, sorry, I was yep. interrupted there, Roger. One of the things that helps doing that is telling stories about people. You know, underneath it all, uh, we, we are pretty convinced that we can stimulate interest among people who've already got an interest in mills and milling. But the, the real um, mission is to get to a wider public. And they need to talk more about people and what they contribute, the problems they had, and how they overcame them, and what an impact they had. And um, I know well about the uh, Milling Hall of Fame, and have to talk about the opportunity that gives at the moment. But because it's so important to us, we have been developing our own separate theme, and we're calling it Hidden Hero. And we're looking to find stories about people that are hidden away and people have been forgotten and made major contributions to what we're doing. And that starts to get interesting. If, if I've got a moment, can I show you one example? Oh, yes, 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 please do. This, this is the book I came across because... Um, oh, yes. Crazy with me. I don't know you've ever come across Cora Hind. No, no. Never said fucking lady. So, <laughs> um, like yourself, she's not British. Um, she comes from Canada. She was born in 1861 and died in the 1940s. And as a woman in Canada at that time, you know, there, there was an attitude towards, um, you know, men had the power and women had the um, use of value, but they didn't really, they weren't really listened to. And she developed an authority about the prices, the yields of grain around the world. And within a space of 10 years before the Second World War, she became the, na the Canadian National Authority on Grain Yields. When she died in, two, I think it was 1944, 1945, that sort of time, the Winnipeg Grain um, Exchange had two minutes silence. Everything stopped. Because what she'd done, what she, she'd been, she was a journalist like Yoga Self, and she'd been commissioned by the Winnipeg, Winnipeg Free Press to travel the world and find out what opportunities were for Canadian wheat in different countries, looking at the truth about their own grain yields and so on and so forth. And it's absolutely magical how this one woman was able to do so much in that sort of way. And it's and just telling that story gets a whole issue, set of issues to the general public you never really thought about before. Mm. Uh, and I find that sort of very stimulating. What, what's her name again, Ron? Just so we... Uh, Sorry. Cora Hine. She's on our website. Yeah. We've got a biography session of women pioneers. And well, she's one of them there. Yeah. So obviously we we're on the same wavelength about um, you know, the significant people and the contributions they've made to the milling milling story. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think that's, um, you know, moving on to the Milling Hall of Fame and uh, which is what the magazine has been instrumental in setting up. And it was one of the gentlemen in our office, uh, James Taylor, who, who mentioned it first. And we have taken it on as a company. We established it last year. We had the first inductee last year. And uh, this year we're, we're having our second on uh, the tw uh, March 20th. And uh, we would dearly like uh, the Milling Archive Trust to record a history of, of who gets inducted into the Milling Hall of Fame. Uh, and and I understand that the uh, Mills Archive Trust might be might accommodate us there. I bet we're delighted to. Oh, it's that we got the Milling Brain Room. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's part of the same process, isn't it? We are doing the same thing. We're preaching about the the value of people contributing to uh, milling and to feeding the world. It's that you know the whole set of issues here, and to have. Um, this opportunity of saying thank you to certain people and not necessarily all of them still alive, some of them maybe dead. I know, for example, one of the, uh, I think last year, Rex Wales was um, nominated um, as inducted into the Hall yeah. of Fame. And there's a significant person in the history of traditional milling. Um, and I think it's rather good to see this um, thing develop. So we will help in every way we can. Um, the very least we'll do is rec keep records of everything that you give us 
Um, so that that's preserved for posterity. You know, we are not doing something for this year and next year. We're doing something for the next generation and the one after that. Yes. So we're telling the stories now that may be relevant in 2080 or yeah. whatever. You know, and, and so I think it's vital we capture it. Yeah. And in the short term, we can do things like publicize the information yeah. as well. I think it's a win-win for both of us. Well, Ron, just a technical point. Can you move a little bit to your right? Yeah, <laughs> we want to keep keep you on the screen. It, it, <laughs> That's it's good. Impact, it's the impact of COVID, you know. Really. Yeah. <laughs> After all, you are a couple. Um, yeah. No, no, but yeah. you know that brings up a very interesting point that I'm sure people viewing this uh, interview will want to know is that it, it, are people outside the UK. Uh, important, like the Canadian lady you just mentioned, uh, to the archive itself, historically. I mean, should they be considering their collections in other countries to uh, to ask you to put into your archive? Absolutely. Um, well, in fact, it was very interesting. One of the first collections we received was from, um, it was actually an expatriate Brit um, who had gone to the States and was saying there was no real place for all his work with the millwright and um, could we take it and over the last 15 20 years we've been getting container loads of material from him um, and um, it's, it's so valuable because it a lot of it's on american mills of course um, and you know the americans then come to us and say please can we have something the nice thing is it's easy to do we can digitize material and make it available Mm. And one of our strengths is the digital uh, side of things. We are building that up enormously. Mm. And I think that's important. You know, an archive in the old days was a, a glorified warehouse where you go and look for stuff. Nowadays, it's much more a digital entity. We've got all the records, we've got the originals, we keep those back out again. But the, the important well, what, investment is on the digital side, making things available as many people as possible. And that happened with the Rex Rose collection, all his travels abroad, particularly Finland and America again, but Finland particularly, he took hundreds of photographs which were digitised and the Finnish government were over the moon with it when, when they saw what we'd done. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's connecting people around the world all, all the time. It's really good. So we're excited about it and we're looking all the time for international support. I mean, an area which uh, we've never really explored very well, but we've got one of the biggest and best collections on mills in the Islamic world because we had one of our trustees and specialists in that part and spent years in Iran and Morocco and a variety of other places collecting material about mills and all the rest of it. And so the, the stack of stuff like that, which is available, but all we've got is a list of what there is because we, we it costs money to create this sort of um, digital universe that we're trying to yeah. uh, put together. So, so just finally, uh, you are a charity, you are a nationally recognized and authorized uh, archive, yeah. uh, and you're looking for support outside the UK as well as inside the UK. Absolutely. You know, it's an international effort. We've got the advantage of UK tax laws mm -hmm. that help us, uh, you know, because of being a charity, but we're not confined to the UK in any way. Our outlook is international and our product is as well. Okay, and uh, and it's great news for the industry that uh, you're supporting the uh, uh, Melling Hall of Fame, which has an actual uh, location in Wittenberg in Germany in a museum called the Flower World Museum. Uh, and you'll see in the next edition or this edition that uh, uh, goes out in March that uh, there's a picture of the, the Melling Hall of Fame. So. I'm looking forward to it. Ron and uh, Mildred, thank you very much for joining me this morning and uh, good luck or, or, or may your success never fail as you go into the future uh, in recording the history of uh, our milling industry. But thank okay. you. Thank you for joining thank us. You. Thank you, Roger. Okay. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.